Hello and welcome to lesson 74 of the Learning Guitar series. In this particular lesson, we're going to look at the sixth degree of melodic manner, which is called uh, Locrian uh, Natural 2. Let's dive straight into it and uh, let's see what we have. So the Locrian Natural 2 mode is the sixth mode of melodic manner and presents the following intervals. 1, 2, flat 3, 4, flat 5, flat 6, flat 7. Let's have a look straight away how we get to that conclusion. So I'm going to write here... Uh, this is a melodic minor. And since we're starting from the sixth degree, so we're starting from F sharp in this case, let me I'm, I'm just gonna as usual rewrite the same the same scale. So G sharp, A, B, C, D. Any. As always, these are the same notes, just I started from M sharp and I'm ending up uh, an octave higher. Okay? But let's have a look at the intervals as they relate to the F sharp. So G sharp from an F sharp point of view is the second. A from an F sharp perspective is a flat three. B from an F sharp perspective is a fourth. C from a sharp perspective is a flat five. D from F sharp perspective is a flat six, and E is a flat seven. Hence the interval that we just described. Already the name implies how it is basically a Locrian scale, the seventh degree of the major mode, but with a natural two as opposed to a flat two. When we studied the when we studied the Locrian, the intervals of Locrian are one flat two, flat three. 4, flat 5, flat 6, flat 7. So I can see the only difference in between these two particular scales is basically the 2, and hence the name of the actual scale, as in Locrian Natural 2. So if we look at it from the perspective, uh, I don't know, let's have a look from G. I have, for Locrian, I would have had 1, flat 2, flat 3, 4, flat 5, flat 6, flat 7. Now I simply have one natural two, flat three, and the rest of the scale is exactly the same. As such, it can be applied to half diminished chord, minor seven flat five double chords, but also, as we will see, to dominant seven chords, such as seven flat 13, 11, 11 flat 13, nine flat 13, all third type of dominant seven chords. Let's have a look at why. Well, the fact that it applies to half diminished chord is kind of simple because we have one flat three, flat five, flat seven in the scale. And as we have seen uh, when we've done family of chords, we find out that you know that's pretty much like an alpha diminished chord and in fact if i play let's say let's do g half diminished here is the sound As we mentioned it, we also can use it over a dominant seven chord. And in fact, in that case, what's happening is like we're going to create some alterations. Uh, of course, uh, the reference in that case, in terms of understanding the differences, would be the Mixolydian, the Mixolydian scale, and the Mixolydian scale has these intervals. And when I pitch them against now this particular scale, now I would have the flat three instead of a three, and we call that a sharp nine when we define it as an alteration. Of course, we have the flat five, and that will be a second alteration. And of course, we have the flat six, or sharp five, or flat 13, or you can call it different ways, against the, the flat six. Applied to over a dominant seven chord, it can be used to create tension, which resolve into a one chord. Typical uh, five to one, or a minor five to one contest. And as I just described it to you here, is how you relate the intervals to each other. So let's have a listen to actually what, what that sounds like. So in the context of, uh, say, uh, a major 251, and we've, we've done major 251s uh, during the studies of the major modes, uh, let's do this in the key of C. So in the key of C, I would have D minor, G7, 
C major. And in this case, when it comes to G7, instead of playing G mixolydian, we're gonna be using uh, G local and natural too. I'm gonna loop the progression so you can hear how it sounds like. And of course, as we mentioned, we can also use it over um, uh, a minor 251. And a minor 251, instead of being, for example, D minor, G7, C major, is going to be the half diminished G7, C minor. We haven't studied yet minor 251 and when the, where the kind of harmony comes from. I'm going to do that when we do uh, when we study harmonic minor modes. Nevertheless, at the moment, just take it as face value. And so basically, the progression is D half diminished, in this case, still G7, into C minor. And for D half diminished, for the moment, actually, you know, I can use, it's an half diminished chord, we're just doing it now. I can use Locrian natural 2 over this chord. Over G7, I'll be using the same, you know, still Locrian natural 2, but this time G Locrian natural 2. Let's see, let's see what it sounds like. As you can hear, it's a bit of a harder sound to negotiate over uh, a minor 251. And the simple reason is, the minor 251, when it comes to the dominant chord, when it comes to the A7, actually implies that it's, sorry, G7, it actually implies that it's a G7 all third, because we're looking into the minor harmonic modes. So it's a dominant 7 that somehow wants a sharp 5 or a sharp 9, a flat 9, wants alteration in the chords, and actually in the context they're not even alterations, they're a part of the harmonization. And in this case, when we're playing G, local and natural 2, it does have a 9 instead of a flat 9. And then 9, and also like it does an 11, which are all part of the mixolydian kind of mode. And those notes, in a way, they make it hard for use. In other words, you have this kind of, you have this kind of chord implied, which is the dominant 7 with alteration. In this case, it's got sharp 5 and flat 9. But the scale calls for this note. So although academically correct, I can apply um, a local and natural 2 to a dominant 7 in the context of um, a minor 251, you know, it's an acquired sound. While in the cost in the context of a major two five one, so where the dominant seven chord is would be mixolydian if non altered. Well in the case it sounds it sounds very good. <laughs> Let's keep digging into the into this mode. 
Another typical application is to use this mode over half diminished chords, in particular when coming across minor 2 5 1 progressions, for example, in a progression like D minor 7 flat 5, G7 altered C minor. And it's possible to use the D Lothian natural 2 over the D minor 7 flat 5. So, what's happening in this case, we're back to a minor 2 5 1. But in this case, instead of applying D Lothian natural, uh, sorry, G Lothian natural 2, we're actually using it over the 2 chord. So, for D half diminished, we're using. D Locrian natural too, as opposed to D Locrian. And D Locrian will fit, and we know from the major modes, Locrian is a scale that applies nicely to half diminished chord. But that flat 9 is always. makes it a bit harsher as a sound. I'll play you both. So I'm gonna loop a minor 2 5 1. The first time around, I'm gonna use Locrian, maybe the first two times around, I'll be using Locrian as in D log in over the half diminished chords and don't worry it doesn't matter what I'm playing on the rest and then I'm gonna use um, D log in natural on two for another couple of rounds And now with the natural two. And uh, now it's time to get the, the, the neck diagram out because what derives from this approach is actually kind of interesting. Here is a Locrian natural too. And uh, we're playing this over an half diminished chord. I'm gonna highlight it for you so you can see it. Here is the D half diminished. And here is the scale that we're associating with it. The concept I'm trying to get across is now when we're playing G7 in that progression, Let's put a G note here, and you can see it's the fourth. In this context, it's the fourth. But the moment the harmony changes to G7, let me make this the root note. Automatically, I can still stay in the same scale because from a G perspective, now the intervals obviously change. And what I have is one flat two, so flat nine, sharp nine, and then four, um, four, five, and six. I mean, it's, it's still part of the of that chord. So in practical terms, when we do the minor 2 5 1, I can treat the 2 and the 5 as pretty much the same, the same, the same thing. So I can run um, a local natural 2 buff when the half diminished is on and when the G7 is on. So just to give you a practical example, what I'm going to do now, I'm still going to loop a minor 2 5 1. Uh, over the 2 and the 5, I'm just going to play D, look in uh, natural 2, and when it comes to the 1 chord, it's just a minor chord, I mean C minor, I'll just use, I don't know, C Aeolian, any, any C minor scale would do.
I hope it makes sense. And uh, well, if it doesn't, you can always um, leave a comment on the YouTube channel if that helps, or obviously if you're a patron, uh, you can send me a direct message anytime. Let's keep digging. The model arpeggio spells 1 flat 3, flat 5, flat 7, 9, 11, and flat 13. From it, we gather that beside the basic half diminished arpeggio, which we already studied when we done the locking, uh, the locking modes, we can further develop the sound of chords and melodies using 9, 11, and flat 13. Okay, let's explain that. As usual, this is the horizontal structure of a locking natural 2. Let's write the vertical structure when we stack intervals in thirds. So from F sharp, the vertical structure would go would give me A, then it would give me C, then I would have E. From E, uh, we go to uh, G sharp. From G sharp, we can go to B. And from B, we go to D. And from D, we would be back to F sharp. Actually, just since we're doing a lot of things in G, Maybe it might help you if I transpose everything up a semitone. So now we have G locking natural two. So this becomes G, this becomes A, this becomes B flat, this becomes C. I'm just transposing it the semitone up, nothing particularly special. This becomes D flat, this becomes E flat, this becomes F. And of course we're back to G. So the same vertical structure now reads B flat, D flat, F, A, C, and E flat. Same thing, just this time it's G. Now if we look at the interval, we have 1, flat 3, flat 5, so D flat from a G perspective is a flat 5, F is a flat 7, A is a 9, C is an 11, and then you have the flat 13. Hence the modal arpeggio. So if I play G, um, local and natural 2 as a modular arpeggio, you have 1, flat 3, flat 5, flat 7, now you have 9, then you have 11, flat 13, and 1. So you have this kind of sound. And the chord is obviously half diminished. Now, as always, what's interesting is when we break down this vertical structure in, uh, into triads and extended triads. Let's have a look. If you look at it in terms of triads, okay, G, B flat, D is a G diminished triad. Now, B flat, D, F, which basically gives us the flat 3, flat 5, and flat 7, this is a B flat minor. As in, from a B-flat perspective, D-flat is a flat 3 and F is a fifth. So that's a, a minor triad. If we look at it from the point of view of D-flat, F, and A, this is the D-flat augmented. If we look at F, A, and C, so flat 7, 9, and flat and 11 of the upper stretcher, now we have an F, simply an F major triad. Now, if we look at A, C, and E flat, from an A perspective, C is the flat 3, easy, and E flat is a flat 5. So also this is a diminished. Then we have C, E flat, and G, and C, if C is number 1, E flat is the flat 3, and G is the fifth. So this gives us C minor. And now you can already start seeing a pattern where we can use minor triads which are a tone apart and in the specific up a flat three and up a fourth from the actual chord I'll, I'll show it to you practically in a second last but not least we have e flat so the flat 13 going to g going to b flat so from an e flat perspective g is the major third and uh, b flat is a fifth so this is an e flat triad major triad and again, you can see a pattern here where we can have two major triads a tone apart, starting from the flat 7 and the flat 6 of that chord. 
what does that mean? We have a G chord, and we say that we have an E flat triad, major triad, and an F major triad. Um, here is a F major triad, then we're gonna come across this chord again because it also belongs to the dominant seven and sus. But this gives us basically the F triad, major triad, that gives us the seven, nine, and eleven. Uh, so we don't really have the flat three and the flat five, but nevertheless, I can still imply the sound of it. And can use that scale over it. Let's, let's loop it so you, know, you can actually hear it in action. As a scale, we are using G, low G, natural too. So we said we could use an E flat triad, and for example, here, here is an E flat triad, or this is an E flat triad, and if you want to stretch, this is this is an E flat triad, and so I can have these kind of sounds now. So here is the E flat triad. Actually, let's do it this way. When I have an E flat triad with a bass of G. And of course, this is now an F triad with a bass of G. Same scale. Also, the fact that there is a couple of minor chords, also we can use which are which are um, a tone apart. And if I use B flat minor, now I'm having flat three, flat five, flat seven. All nice. And if I use C minor, then I have the eleven, flat three, flat thirteen, and one. So, for example, I can have here this B flat minor as a triad, and this is a C minor as a triad, or this is a B flat minor triad. And again, this is C minor, unless you want to really stretch up here. Actually, let's do it that way. Let's see what it sounds like. Very interesting sound, especially like <clears throat> performed this way, where you have basically slash chords. In this case, we were having a B flat minor over G, or a C minor over G, or a F major triad over G, or a E flat major triad over G. That's why analyzing the the, the upper stretcher, the vertical stretcher of an arpeggio, really uh, can help in terms of harmony. But also, like obviously, I can play this these triads as single notes as opposed to chords, and now they become part of a solo. Um, so, even if I have a static half diminished chord, in this case, I'm going to have G half diminished static as a chord, and these the arpeggios are going to change. I'm going to use B flat minor, C minor, F major, uh, E flat major. Let's see what it sounds like. Here 
series B minor and B flat minor. As you can see, there is a lot of approaches that we can have. Uh, from a harmonic point of view, we can you know, simply use an off diminished chord for, say, for example, for G is G off diminished, or we can use slash chords based on triads. So B, uh, B flat minor over G, C minor over G, F major triad over G, or um, E flat triad over G. That's the most, you know probably the easiest to reach. Uh, same thing, if we extend the triads, we can think of it harmonically in terms of, okay, F7 over G, or um, E flat 7 over G, or C minor over G, etc. As you know, scales, arpeggios, and chords are three sides of the same thing. So if you're the soloist, now you're using the log in um, natural two scale, or pairing triads, or pairing extended triads, you name it to get different sounds out of the same scale in a way. And um, before we conclude the lesson, let's have a look at the end of the PDF and, of course, some chord studies which you'll find in there. So, in particular, flat 13 and 11 are common to both Locrian and Locrian natural 2, and since the presence of the natural 2 or 9 in the following octaves, that creates the Locrian natural 2 sound. In the accompanying PDF, obviously, you'll have the Locrian natural 2, the scales, five shapes, nothing new is melodic minor displaced. Of course, you have the arpeggio, and the arpeggio, you should already know it, because these are, the basic arpeggio is a uh, half diminished arpeggio, so you already studied this when you did Locrian. And, and of course, the, la the Locrian natural two modal arpeggio, which in this case is gonna have a nine as opposed to a flat nine. After that, you have some chord studies for Locrian natural two, and you'll see some of those triadic theories and extended triadic theories apply to it. Anyway, this is divided by shape here, is the usual gauge system, shape of E, shape of D, shape of C, shape of A, and shape of G. I hope it makes sense, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the, the lesson and you're getting something out of it. Um, it's been a pleasure as always, and uh, until next time. <laughs>